second season of The Bear hits like a heavyweight, throwing jabs in the first few episodes before delivering haymaker after haymaker in the last few hours, where the first season was a low-stakes, low-budget affair that, in the hands of lesser talent, could have popped up onto Hulu and disappeared just as quickly. The second season had to surpass its previous performance, and I believe that it did. This narrative about trauma, the kinds we experience with our coworkers, our friends, and our family resonated with millions of viewers, and in its second season delivers on the inherent promise of the plot to deliver a haunting message. I want to talk about what makes The Bear the best story I've seen about the reality of work. Spoilers ahead for season two of The Bear. Those who work in the food industry, particularly those in the kitchens of small restaurants, work long hours, generally receiving low wages to go along with the cuts, scrapes, bruises, and the constant drumbeat of insults that are to be expected when every single movement chefs take has a cost associated with it. Where reality TV and many chef movies can make cooking look glamorous and noble, many who do the job day in and day out will feel the opposite. The Bear won fans in kitchens across the world for depicting a more honest reflection of the day-to-day -day of feeding a community and vying to stay in business. Scroll through the comments on any article or video about the show and you'll find people who work or worked in kitchens talking about the way the show resonated with them. The same way the show is honest about the words and techniques used in the kitchen. Moving right up to third can only move six. Bird chef, thank you. It's just as dedicated to showing the economic picture that the businesses and employees face. Sydney must forego a wage in order to achieve her goals of creating her own menu and ascending in the industry. Carmi must gamble his only meaningful possession in order to get the capital necessary to actualize his dream restaurant. And Richie must confront the reality of his job security as a middle-aged man struggling to provide something of value to a child he doesn't have custody of. Many of the characters of the bear must confront their passion this season as they seek to grow into what they aspire to be. Carmi seeks to rekindle his passion for food and life. Richie must find his passion for the career he is now in. Marcus must travel outside of his comfort zone to embrace his passion. And Sydney questions if her passion has carried her past her capability. Yeah. Season 2 shines in the sixth episode, Fishes, which acts as an explainer on the character of the Brazado family. Set five years in the past during a Christmas feast, this episode gives us a deep look into the generational trauma that sits at the core of many of the characters of the bear. But I think it also encapsulates the entire point of the series as a whole. Just don't ask her. We begin the episode with a warning about the Brazado family matriarch. Donna. We're told she's crazy, dangerous, and to be left alone. But upon first meeting her, she seems reasonable and understandably stressed about preparing such a large meal. As the evening wears on, Donna's sanity deteriorates. Unable to keep track of time within the kitchen, which is among the most crucial skills for a chef, and getting progressively more drunk, a metaphor for the rate of substance abuse within kitchens, Donna becomes increasingly volatile. She becomes deeply depressed and feels unappreciated after providing such a meaningful meal, and yet it's when she's shown compassion by her daughter that she spirals completely out of control. She pushes her family away and is self-destructive, endangering the lives of everyone in the room, herself included. The episode begins with Sugar being warned not to say anything to her mother and ends with her poking the bear. Jamie Lee Curtis's performance as Donna Brazado is jarring, but I believe it's particularly special. For decades, Jamie Lee Curtis has played flawed mothers, but none remotely as horrifying as her performance in The Bear. I think the choice to focus the episode on Donna and the way she transforms from a familiar provider to a monster throughout the course of laboring over the meal is one with extreme meaning. When we return from the Feast of the Seven Fishes to the present, things are ultimately looking up for the staff of the bear. Carmi is in the early stages of a relationship he has wanted for most of his life. Sydney is earning the respect of her father. Richie is finding his purpose and improving himself as a professional. 
The restaurant, a supporting character in its own right, is making the needed improvements to open. But those successes will come at a cost. Each of the characters we follow are immediately taken from their highest moment to a low point in the final episode. Marcus, who has grown so much as a chef, loses his friendship with Sydney, and at the end of the episode, the audience is informed that his mother has likely passed away. Richie, who has now become a master manager, isn't appreciated, and his role at the bear is in jeopardy as he fights with Carmen. Sydney, who has ascended as a chef and manager, has now internalized her anxiety and stress to the point that it is causing her to vomit a lot and possibly pointing to larger health complications. Finally, in what I think is the most meaningful moment of the series, Carmi, who had managed to open his dream restaurant and receive the love of the girl of his dreams, dedicates himself to a life devoid of joy in his attempt to prevent further failure. I don't need to provide amusement or enjoyment. need to receive any amusement or enjoyment. I'm completely fine with that. Because no amount of good is worth how terrible this feels. And this, I believe, is the core principle of the bear. That labor in pursuit of capital dehumanizes. That these people who all follow their dreams no matter what the cost will be torn to shreds by the reality of running a business. Their passions be damned. I think there's another small piece of the final episode that exemplifies this principle. Late in the season, we're introduced to a young chef who can chop vegetables at superhuman speeds. Initially impressed by his skill, the characters must fire him when they learn that he's smoking crack, which is likely what fuels him to be able to cut so fast. Like I said last year, I think The Bear is the most honest series we have on TV about the nature of modern working environments and the relationship younger generations have with the economy. Let me know in the comments if you agree, and like and subscribe to help the channel grow.